Amen. Pastor JB needs to turn around and look at that sometimes, doesn't he? We all knew that he missed something but him. But it's okay. It's all right. It's, it's no big deal. He, he looked down there at me like I, like I had messed up, you know what I mean? Because I was saying what was actually supposed to be said. But it's okay. It's not a big deal. Hey, we like to have fun here. It's, it's, that's, it, you can't have fun in church, right? Come on now. Why, why even come? Hey, uh, so I just want to reiterate a couple of things that uh, Pastor JB had mentioned. Our men's meeting. Guys, seriously, get off of work. Do whatever you can do to be there. Because this is a burden that's been on my heart for a while now, and I want you guys there. Um, Riley Israel is, man, he's just an amazing man of God. And I'm just believing for each and every one of us to get something from God there. So I encourage you, um, that's April 2nd. It's the first Saturday of the month. Um, I'm probably going to go more toward the evening. Um, going to have a time of worship. Uh, we're going to have a time with God. And uh, just really looking forward to that. And then also I just want to say, you know, the outreach for the youth uh, is, a, is a big thing. You know, Junior and Jalen, um, they, man, they, they do everything they can, and, and, and they continue and continue to push and do the best that they can, and, and they need a little help. Come on, y'all. And if, if we have some people that just on, a, on Wednesday night can give us an hour, go pick up some food or, or make some food, bring it, set it up, the youth eat. Uh, they play games. They have a great time about the first hour and then clean it up while they do what they do. And then, you know, the last hour they, they dig into the word. And that's what I love about our youth pastors is it's not just, I mean, we have fun with the kids. But they give them the word of God. And if there's ever a time in a generation that needs the word of God, it's this generation. And so I am so thankful for Junior and Jalen. I'm so thankful for what they do. Um, and we just want to help them. So it's a little bit of an outreach opportunity for those of you that are looking for something to do. Uh, maybe Sunday mornings doesn't work for you. Um, as far as volunteering, well, here's an opportunity. Amen? We all weren't loud enough on that. Amen? Amen. Amen. That's what I like to hear. Well, if this is your first time coming or maybe you haven't been in a while. My name is Pastor Adam. Uh, I am one of the pastors on staff, and I have the opportunity this morning to bring you the Word of God. Uh, we worship God in three ways in this, in this place. We do it through the music, which is amazing. Y'all give him a hand clap. Come on. Like, I love our, I love our worship team. And uh, we do it through giving, through the offering. And then we also do worship through the word. And this is my favorite part because without this, come on, y'all, without the word of God, our lives can't change. We can't do anything different. We can't change our own lives. Come on, y'all. We can't do what God called us to do without his word. And so I am so thankful for the word of God. So I had the opportunity this morning to, to bring you the word of God. And we have been on this series of great faith. And what I love about this series and I love about what's going on is that every week I have people that come up to me and are like, man, just thank you for that. Like that word meant something to me, and, and people are getting things from God out of this series, and we're going to continue this series. We really haven't even dug in deep yet, y'all. Come on now. Like we haven't even really dug into the great faith stuff. We're just kind of still going over and making sure, because if we don't even know about faith, how can we even use it? Come on, how can we step out and do something that God's called us to do if we don't even know what faith is? And so today we're going to talk a little bit more uh, I have one verse that I want to recap from last, from last week, and it's Romans 12, 1, and it, and it came from, um, you know, where does our faith start? And we were talking about how God places faith inside of each one of us. And this is what Romans 12, 12 uh, verse 1, it says, Therefore I urge you, brothers and sisters, to view God's mercy, to offer your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and pleasing, to God. Now, we learn that how do we please God? What pleases God? Faith does. Because Romans, uh, Romans Hebrews eleven six says, without faith, it's impossible to please him. Meaning, if I'm going to please God, I have to have faith to do it. And I have to have faith in him because it says, how can anybody even come to him? Let's say, know that he exists. And how can they even know that he exists and know that he's a rewarder without faith? So the faith that we have inside of us is something that pleases God. 
And so out of this verse right here, it says that it says to offer your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and pleasing to God. This is your true and proper worship. Now, we said this last week, and if you didn't get it, if you didn't write it down, write it down this week. True worship is living a life of sacrifice and faith. True worship, according to that scripture we just read, is living a life of sacrifice and faith. And that's what we want to do as Christians. You know, as a pastor, you know, the thing that I want to do each week is give you something to grab a hold of. Like, and I, I think that sometimes, you know, we get to talking about faith and, and you know, we really hadn't got into to the areas of the faith. You know, there's two places in the, in the New Testament where Jesus told two specific people that they had great faith. And we haven't even got to them yet. But sometimes it's, it's a matter of, of, of building a stepping stone for you guys to get on. Because faith sometimes, I'm going I'm to be honest, faith sometimes gets a bad rap. Because there's things that we have to do to ignite our faith. There's things that we have to do, and sometimes we don't want to do that. Come on, sometimes we don't want to put in the work of studying the Word sometimes to get what we need, to get what God has for us. So adding to that scripture from last week, it's Hebrews 12. And in Hebrews 12, it says this, starting in verse 1, it says, Therefore, since we are surrounded with such a great cloud of witnesses, let us also lay aside every weight and sin which clings so closely. And let us run with endurance the race that is set before us, looking to Jesus, the founder and perfecter of our faith. Everything we do about faith is founded in him and perfected by him. He is the founder and the CEO of our faith, y'all. Come on. Like he is the one that we look to to perfect what God has placed inside of us. And so as we, I've got a lot of scriptures today. I'm going to kind of jump through some things because there's, there's, there's a place I want to get this, this morning and and. Uh, we've got just a short amount of time to get there. So open your Bibles to Romans chapter 10. Romans chapter 10, because we're still talking about where faith comes from. So Romans chapter 10, and we're going to start in verse 14. It says, how then will they call on him of whom they have not believed? And how will they believe on him of whom they have not heard? And how are they to hear unless someone preaching? And how, is they, and how are they to preach unless they are sent? As it is written, how beautiful are the feet of those who preach the good news. But they have, not all, they have not all obeyed the gospel. For Isaiah says, Lord, who has believed what he has heard from us? Verse 17. So faith comes from hearing in hearing through the word of Christ. Faith comes from hearing the word and I'm going to step on some, some people's feet because faith doesn't come from prayer. Faith does not come from prayer. Write this down. If you are lacking in faith, you are lacking in the word. If faith comes by hearing, and hearing the word, if I'm lacking in faith, I'm lacking in word. Come on, y'all. Like I've been in my life before, I've been in places where I'm like, God, just give me more faith. You know what usually happens at that time? Scripture pops up. Scripture pops into my head of, of, of what I'm dealing with and, and how I'm going through that. Because God's saying, if you need more faith about healing, read more healing scriptures. Come on, if you need more faith for anxiety, read anxiety scriptures. Come on, y'all. And, and, and if you need more faith uh, uh, for finances, read more scripture on finances. You see, there's not, there's not more than one kind of faith. There's only one kind of faith, but it's how we grow our faith. And that's something I want to talk to you this morning about is growing faith. 
Because a lot of times we want to we want to get from point A to point B, but it's that point of growing that faith that is inside of us. You know, praying for for uh, for faith is kind of like you know if I'm standing here with a bottle of water and I'm walking, I'm looking at you guys, and I'm like, man, I am like thirsty. You know what I mean? Like, like I just, man, I just need something to drink. Like, I just, you know, I just, I just, man, I wish I've got this thirst that I just, man, I just, I just can't quench it. Like, I just, I just, you see, praying for faith is like holding a bottle of water. Because God's given us the word of God, and we hold it, but we never drink it. The way to quench my natural thirst is to what? Open the water and take a drink. The way to quench your supernatural thirst for faith is to open the word of God and read it. Faith comes by hearing and hearing the words. You need scriptures for your kids find them don't sit there and just say god i just man i just need my kids i just need you need come on y'all open the bottle up and take a drink of water let's clarify that (laughs) that's for another day and another subject but god's given us scripture he's given us the word of god And we walk around and we pray to him for more faith about something. And he's like, just open the word and build your faith. So let's talk about growing faith. In 2 Thessalonians verse 1, or chapter 1 and verse 3, it says this. It says, we ought to always give thanks to God for you, brothers, as it is right. Because your faith is growing abundantly. And the love of every one of you for one another is increasing. See, he just told us right here that there is, there is a, a, something that we need that, to grow our faith. Because he told them, he said, listen, he says, your faith is growing abundantly. They were doing something to grow their faith. There were steps that they were taking that he was complimenting them on to grow their faith. So what does that tell us? It tells us that that our faith needs growing. You know, the scripture scripture over in uh, Matthew 17, if you have your Bibles, go ahead and turn over there. So there's two scriptures in in the Word of God that that talk about a mustard seed. And we always hear, and and when I was growing up, I always, you know, it was always preached, man, if you just, you know, this scripture right here that we're going to go to, faith of a mustard seed, man, you you can move mountains. Absolutely believe it. So let's read that. Matthew 17, we're going to start in verse 14. It says, And when they had come to the multitudes, a man came to him, kneeling down and, and kneeling down to him and saying, Lord, have mercy on my son, for he is an epileptic and suffers severely. For he often falls into the fire and often into the water. So I brought him to your disciples but they could not cure him. Then Jesus answered and said, O faithless and perverse generation, how long shall I be with you? How long shall I bear with you? Bring him here to me. And Jesus rebuked the demon, and it came out of him, and the child was cured from that very hour. Then the disciples came to Jesus privately, and they said, why could we not cast him out? You know, it's like you, you told us to go and do this. You told us to do and to use your name. You told us to go and be what you called us to be. But yet we couldn't, we couldn't cast this one out. Like, like we couldn't help this boy. Tell us why. Verse 20. So Jesus said to them, because of your unbelief, For assuredly, I say to you, 
If you have faith as a mustard seed, you will say to this mountain, move from here, and it will move. And nothing will be impossible for you. Now pay close attention to verse 21. It says, however, this kind does not go out, talking about the demon, This kind does not go out except by prayer and fasting. What is he saying there? He's saying exactly what we started out this message today with. We said today that our true worship is what? Sacrifice and faith, right? What is he saying? However, this kind does not come out except with prayer and fasting, with faith of prayer and sacrifice of fasting. Our true worship is of sacrifice and of faith. You see, there's things in our life that we so desperately want to get rid of, yet we refuse to sacrifice and use our faith. And the disciples, I find this interesting, the way, Jesus, the way Jesus told this, because the disciples came to him like, hey, like, like we expected this demon to come out. Like we prayed for this boy, and you need to tell us what's going on, because we prayed for him and nothing happened. Jesus said there's some sacrifice and something about faith that you need to make this one leave. See, in our life, when we're going through some things, you know, we, we use faith for a lot of different things. But, but sometimes, if you ever ran into that problem, and I, I, I guarantee you, everyone in this room is dealing with a situation like you just feel like you're beating your head against the wall. Because you've prayed about it. Come on, y'all. And you've taken authority over it, and you just can't seem to get it to leave. Maybe there's some sacrifice. But the Bible says that by by everything, let everything be established by two or three witnesses, right? So there's another scripture in the Word of God that talks about a mustard seed. So let's turn over to that one. Over in Mark. Mark chapter 4. We're going to start in verse 30. It says this. It says, then he said, this is Jesus... To what shall we liken the kingdom of God, or with what parable shall we picture it? It is like a mustard seed, which, when it is sown on the ground, is smaller than all other seeds on earth. But, when it is sown, it grows. It grows up and it becomes greater than all the earth's. And the shoots out branches so that the birds of the air may nest under its shade. You know, there are things that, um, um, you know, I grew up on a, on a dairy farm and, and we cut hay and, and we planted gardens and we did all that. And there are, are things that are needed to grow vegetables, to grow, you know, grass for your, for, to make hay out of. There are things that are needed. You need good soil. You need rain. You need the water. Come on, y'all. You need the sunlight. There are things that are needed to grow. And, 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 and Jesus said, listen, I need, to, I need to let you know something about this mustard seed. You see, he's placed something inside of us that he wants us to grow. He's placed faith inside of us. And it says, though it may seem... And though it may be the smallest thing that you feel like is inside of you, he says, if you'll just grow it, if you'll tend to it, if you'll water it, if you'll make sure that it's got good soil, if you'll put it in the sun, he says, it'll grow. He said, in that faith that I've placed inside of you, it'll grow larger than anything else in your garden. You see the... The mustard seed is something that we need to plant, and we need to water it, and we need to grow it. We need to give it the Son of God, the water of the Word. Come on, y'all. We need to be good soil that is planted in. 
to step out. There are things that we come up against, and I've had it in, in my own life. There are things that, that I just, I have problems fighting against. And I'm not telling you that it's everything that you come up against, but I want to make sure that in anything that you come up against that you have what you need to come through this. Come on, y'all. There are some things in our life that only come out with sacrifice and with faith. The faith of our prayers and the sacrifice of our flesh. Those are the things that we need to focus on. If you're having problems in a situation, fast. If you've been seeking God about something for a, 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 a amount of time, fast about it. Put your flesh down and build your faith up. You see, your, your flesh is completely against your spirit. They're completely opposites of each other. Yet we need to grow our faith. You know, over in, we've, we've mentioned the woman with the issue of blood several times, but she's intertwined in Mark chapter 5. She's intertwined with this other story about this, this ruler of a synagogue named Jairus. And she's intertwined with this, and I believe it's for a purpose because, you know, it says that, that Jesus came from across the sea and his boat landed, and here comes Jairus, and he steps up and he says, hey, I, I need you to do something for me. You ever went to, to Jesus and like, I need you to do something for me. And he said, I need you to come lay your hands on my daughter so she'll be healed. We don't know what she needs healed from. We don't know what the disease is. All we know is that he's in a desperate situation which pushes him into faith to find Jesus. And he comes to the boat and Jesus says, okay, I'm going to follow you. And so he's following him through and there's a crowd around him and they're making their way from the shore to, to Jairus' house, wherever that is. And they're making their way through the city and this is when the woman with the issue of blood sneaks up and gets her miracle, right? Like she heard Jesus was there like, you know, I've dealt with this issue for 12 years and I just need a miracle and the miracle man is in town so I'm going to go get it. I don't even need him to lay hands on me. I just need to touch his garment. So where was her faith in? Her faith was in just simply touching Jesus. So she sneaks up when they're kind of making their way through town. She sneaks up, grabs her miracle out the back door, and Jesus is like, wait a second. Verse 31, Mark 5, verse 31. It says this, it says, But the disciples, well, let's go back to 30. It says, And Jesus, immediately knowing in himself that power had gone from him. This is right when she touched him. And he turned around to the crowd and he said, Who touched my clothes? Verse 31. And his disciples said to him, and I know this was Peter, just so we understand this, because we know, we know how Peter is, right? Peter just like steps up and just says what's on his mind. Like, he says, You see the multitude thronging you, and you say, Who touched me? Like everybody's touching you, Jesus. Like everybody's around you just want to be part of the crowd. You see, there's a whole lot of people that want to crowd around Jesus, but very few people that touch him in faith. He wasn't asking who's touching me physically. He's asking who touched me with faith. Because there was power he felt leave his body. You know, I feel like a lot of times we just want to crowd around Jesus. And I know there was a lot of times in my life where I just, man, I would just crowd around Jesus. Man, I just, I needed to be in church on Sunday morning and Sunday night and Wednesday night. And I needed to go to a small group and I needed to do this and this and this and this. But I never reached out to him in faith. And so he's asking here, now there's a lot of people around me, there's a lot of people that need things, but there's only one person that snuck up and got what she needed because she asked or she came to him in faith. 
So he looks at her in verse 34 and he says, Daughter, your faith, your faith has made you well. Verse 35, so now, now all this has happened, right? Like Jairus is like just, like Jesus is following Jairus because Jairus, he don't, I mean, Jairus is leading to his house. This woman comes up and everything just stops. And so Jairus is just standing there very patiently like my daughter needs to be healed. Verse 35, it says this. It says, while he was speaking, some came from the ruler of the synagogue's house who said this, your daughter is dead. Why trouble the teacher any further? Verse 36, very important. As soon as Jesus heard the word that was spoken, he said to the ruler of the synagogue, Do not be afraid, only believe. What was he telling Jairus? He was telling him, I need you now that you, the situation has changed. Things are different. You came to me to heal your daughter. But now your daughter's dead, so the situation has changed from needing healing to needing raised from the dead. Jesus looks at him and says, don't be afraid, only believe. He was telling him, you need to to stay with your faith, and it needs to now grow from healing to raising from the dead. I need you in this instance Not to go backwards because what you were believing for is no longer possible. She doesn't need healing. She needs life. I need you to grow your faith in this instance. I need you to look at me. This is Jesus. I need you to look at me. And I need you to believe because I'm following your faith. Jesus was following the faith of this man because he said, Jesus, I need you to come to my house and lay hands on my daughter and heal her. Now she doesn't need healing. She needs life. Situation has completely changed. You know, a lot of times in in our life when we're believing for things, the things that we were believing for seem to be dead now. Like, God, I I know you could do this, But man, now this is where it's at. Like things completely have changed. Like what I was believing for, it seems like can't even happen now because grow your faith. From where it was and what you were believing for, if the circumstance changes, grow your faith to what it needs to be now. And it doesn't take a lot of time. It just takes the word of God. Find that next scripture. Find that next thing that you need. Call uh, any one of anybody that from the church here. Hey, I, I need I need prayer. Like like like, give me some scriptures and, and pray with me because I need to I need to sacrifice my time right now. And I need some faith, so I need some words. So help me. You see, in in here we we don't want to do life alone. We don't want to do life alone. We don't want you to do life alone. We have small groups that you can be a part of. We have people that you can call. Don't do life alone. Don't feel like because your circumstance has changed from what you were believing for to now it just seems dead. Like I, I, I know it could have been resurrected over here, right? Like I know healing can happen to this, but now I went from you know, stage two cancer to stage four. Come on. Like I could believe for healing over here because I still had some life, but over here they're telling me I don't have but a certain amount of time left. Well, is he the God of healing? Just as he's the God of resurrection. If your situation seems like it's went from just needing a little bit of healing to being completely dead. Just grow your faith. Just grow your faith. He asked Jay Iris, he said, listen, he said, huh. he said, listen, I just, I just 
And I, I like this because it says right here in verse 36, as soon as Jesus heard, as soon as he heard what was said, he's like, hey, I need to, because if, if you think on that thing, if you just simply think on that now what you were believing for healing is dead, if that's where you stop, then that's where we stay. But I need you to go from there to now I am the God of life. So as soon as those thoughts come in, you know, the Bible says that we take up the shield of faith to quench every fiery dart from the devil. Those darts are those thoughts. Those thoughts of, of being defeated. Those thoughts of I'm not good enough. Those thoughts of my God, God's not big enough to help this situation. He was good enough to help you. Man, he's just not, he's just not big enough to help me. I don't know how to pull out of this situation. I don't know how to pull myself up. These thoughts and these darts that he keeps throwing at us, that's what our faith is for. As soon as those thoughts come, you need to counteract them. God is big enough. God is the God of life. He's the God that pulls down depression and anxiety. He's the God that can help me financially. He's the God that can build my marriage from something that is lacking to something that is prosperous. Counteract those darts that are being thrown at you. See, a lot of times what we do, though, the darts come and then we think on them. We think about, well, what if my business fails? What if this pandemic has just completely ruined everything? What if I never have another client? What if my marriage now that, what if it's just failing? And so we start thinking on these things. And we start processing the negative side of things. As soon as Jesus heard, he said, don't be afraid only believe. All you need to do in this instant is to grow your faith from here to here. And it's very simple to do. You just need the Word of God. Amen? You guys pray with me this morning. Father, I thank you this morning. I thank you for your Word that you sent. I thank you for that name of Jesus. The name above every name, every disease, every sickness. Father, I thank you for what you're doing in our lives. I thank you that we are, we are increasing our faith by increasing the word and the knowledge that we have of your word. I thank you that, that when we are lacking in areas, Father, I thank you that you send us word in our life to grow what we need to put us where we need to be. That when that doubt and those situations come, that we, we stop immediately and we only believe in you. That you are the answer for everything we need. You are the answer for anything we're going through. And Father, I thank you this morning for people that will pick up your word that will grow through your word, that will learn through your word. Father, I thank you that we will not be people that perish for a lack of knowledge, but we will increase our knowledge in your word, Father, to prosper in whatever area and situation that we need to. Father, you're truly an amazing God. We love you, we praise you, and we honor you. In Jesus' name. Amen. Will you guys stand with me this morning? I just want to say thank you guys for coming. Thank you guys for learning. Thank you for pushing in. Thank you for expectations of the Word of God. Because if we don't expect when we come in here, guess what we're going to get? Nothing. We come with expectations to learn, expectations to grow, 
expectations of God. And we push into him, amen? We push into what he has and what he wants us to do. So I encourage you. I even had somebody this week, somebody that <laughs> doesn't come to church a whole lot, and, and they've been here a couple of times in a couple of other churches, but they were going through a situation. They, they text me, and they're like, Pastor Adam, they're like, and I just, I need some scriptures. And so I text them the scriptures and talked to them. I talked to them later that week and they said, man, everything came out great. They said, I asked several people for several scriptures. And he said, I went to my Bible and every, every scripture that was sent to me, I went through and I highlighted it. And I'd flip over and I'd highlight it. And I would just read through those scriptures and I would just build my faith about this situation. And at the end of everything, ended up working out for them because they pushed I, I truly believe because they pushed into God the situation could have went completely different I can't give a whole lot of details about the situation but the fact that someone would push into God you know we've said it before you know desperation come on can push us into fear or it can push us into faith so I encourage you let it push you into faith amen Hey, we love you guys. Thank you guys for coming. If you need something, call us. If you want to if you want to go through the next steps, which like I like we said earlier, Pastor JB had mentioned the next steps were changing because Pastor Fair and I kind of want to do it personally. We want to sit down with each and every person. We want to get to know you um, and let you know about our church. So if that's something you want to go through, just simply go out and sign up uh, at the Connect spot so that we can contact you and we can sit down and do that uh, because we just, come on guys, we just want to impact the world. Amen? Amen. We love you guys. Y'all have a blessed week.